What's a push box? Well, watch and learn. It's time for all the bells and whistles. Hello everyone, Bill Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Railway Track and Structures Media, with a look at the top news stories we were following the week ending June 3rd. The Government of Canada is continuing to move ahead with concrete actions which improve railway track safety to better protect those living and working near Canada's rail corridors. A series of changes, the third of three installments, stem from a 2020 ministerial order that focused on major risks that could cause derailments due to the condition of railway infrastructure. The changes require railway companies to develop key performance indicators to help Transport Canada analyze track conditions and inform the department's oversight activities, strengthen requirements for railways to inspect and maintain cross ties, and provide Transport Canada inspectors with access to additional information on company track standards so they can ensure that oversight is effective and consistent across Canada. For Skanska USA, 3 is a far cry from 250, but what the contractor is doing in Seattle deserves a major shout out. On Sound Transit's 2024 Northgate to Linwood extension project, the prime contractor is filling up two forklifts and a wheel loader with renewable plant-based diesel. The small experiment is getting Skanska USA ready for Washington State's Climate Commitment Act in 2023. Under the measure, polluters will buy or trade carbon use credits and the supply of credits will be reduced annually in an attempt to lower the total pollution in the region. Oregon, California, and British Columbia all have a similar rule in place. The three Skanska machines out of 250 on the project used almost 3,000 gallons of plant-based biofuels at Mount Lake Terrace as of April 15th. That eliminated 30 metric tons of CO2 emissions. While investigators are on site trying to figure out what caused a crash on the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority's Green Line on June 1st, the company behind the installation of a new safety package was explaining why parts are a thousand miles away in Germany. The design of the safety system is complete but components of the automated crash avoidance system still sit overseas. Unlike positive train control, the Green Line train protection system uses a radio frequency based system with vehicle onboard equipment processors, which is better suited for the Green Line because it operates in tunnels and often in close proximity to other vehicles. The Federal Transit Administration has launched a probe examining MBTA's safety management the investigation was launched back in April following a fatal accident. The FTA has expressed concern about system-wide safety issues. Metrolinx is using a new construction method for the Hazel McCallion LRT. Port Credit GO station will be an important hub for passengers connecting between new Hazel McCallion LRT and the existing Lakeshore West Line. By installing what's known as a push box, it will create a space for the LRT line under the GO train tracks while keeping the GO trains running above. Contractor Mobile Links will use three temporary bridges below the existing tracks before laying new underground LRT tracks and installing the permanent foundations for the street level GO tracks. The push box is a large concrete structure that will serve as the underpass for light rail vehicles traveling under the Lakeshore West Line. It includes a partition wall separating north and southbound vehicles. The three temporary bridges will support the street level GO tracks while the box is being jacked. Afterwards, those bridges will be removed and the train loads will be safely transferred to the top of the push box. <laughs> 